So uh, this is the uh, the uh, next possible next generation image sensor technology I've been working on for a while, most recently at Dartmouth for the last five years. Most of the work I'm going to report was done by uh, my students, as always, uh, especially this guy, Saleh Masoudian, who's a circuit designer, and this guy who's photoshopped in is uh, JJ Ma, who is a uh, device designer. <clears throat> Uh, so, wow, these uh, pictures look a lot like we just saw in the last couple talks, actually, but uh, this is a different sort of thing. Uh, this is a, uh, a binary image sensor that uh, is sensitive to single photons. So it's a photon counting kind of image sensor. Uh, and the idea is to uh, just count ones or zeros on the focal plane and, uh, and then combine this data in a massive way. There may be a uh, 100 million or a billion pixels, binary pixels, on the uh, chip combine this data and uh, produce essentially a grayscale from both uh, X and Y and time uh, in kind of post-processing of the data or somewhere else on the same stack chip perhaps. So when you have uh, binary data, it uh, behaves uh, a little differently. Uh, so uh, the response, which if you think about bit density, on, which is a lot like film grain density, we'll see in a moment, uh, as you increase the exposure, uh, actually, it doesn't uh, grow linearly. It uh, actually has a 1 to the E minus H, where H is the total exposure. Uh, gives you a lot of overexposure uh, latitude as well. Um, and basically, it says, you know, it, it takes a while to actually hit every single pixel on the focal plane with a photon. A lot of, fo a lot of pixels are hit more than once first before everyone is hit. Uh, so if you plot that same plot on a... Uh, uh, D versus log exposure, you get this nice uh, S-shaped curve. This is actually the linear region, but because it's a log, it looks curved. This is sparse exposure. Uh, and then overexposure is the upper part of the S. And uh, just for fun, uh, uh, if you look in 1890 in literature, uh, actually, good luck finding this, but uh, Herder Driftfield uh, did the uh, same measurements on photographic plates, and uh, it's exactly the same curve. And why? Because the statistics of photons hitting unit cells of some sort and causing a change is exactly the same. This is kind of a statistical nature uh, device. Uh, and then for later, I just want to show you if you plot the same plot yet again on log-log, you get this big linear region here in the sparse illumination range and then uh, starts to become nonlinear uh, when you get up to uh, <coughs> a saturation. So as you know, photons come in, lots of shot noise, Poisson arrival, Blah, blah, blah. I think most of you know this, and if you don't, I'm sorry, I don't have time uh, to uh, do it, but go through it. But uh, basically, for our devices, we only care about two things. One is there's no photon. One, there is a photon. And the probability of that is 1 to minus e to the minus h, which is what we were just looking at. <clears throat> also, to prep you for the data that's coming up, I just have to explain how this works. Uh, if you take uh, an electronic device and you shine photons on it, um, and take many, many frames over a period of time and do kind of a voltage histogram and pretend there's no noise, you either get like zero electrons, one electron, two electrons, three electrons, four electrons, and uh, in a histogram way, the probability of each of these things depends upon what the average flux rate is. So if you have a quantum exposure of two, which means on average there are two uh, photons, and that means that uh, most of the time you get one or two, and then there's some probability that you'll get uh, higher values in voltage. If you add read noise then to the readout, uh, these sharp peaks turn into more broadened peaks because of the noise. This is 0.12 electrons RMS read noise. This is 0.25 electrons RMS read noise. You can see that we're starting to lose the discrete nature here. Uh, and uh, finally, by the time you get to one electron read noise, which actually you would think would be pretty good, you kind of lose the quantization of electrons completely. Uh, so in the uh, single bit uh, quantum image sensor, we're going to set a threshold here, and below this level, we're going to quantize it as a zero, and above this, we'll quantize it as a one. And for depending on how much noise, you get, wind up with a bit error rate into uh, what, what the rate of uh, errors are. And uh, you can see here that uh, at a read noise of 0.3 electrons RMS, about 1 in 20 bits is incorrect. And if you can drop the noise to 0.15, uh, you get two orders of magnitude improvement in the bit error rate. So this says that even 0.3 electrons RMS is probably not good for a lot of photon counting applications. We need to drive down to the, the 0.15 electrons RMS range. 
Okay, so how do we do that? So we're going to do this at uh, room temperature and no avalanche, no avalanche multiplication. So it's not like a SPAD or an EMCCD. This is kind of like the brute force approach. We're just going to make the capacitance so small in the sense node that if you put one electron on that sense node, it will increase the voltage above the thermal background. And that's what we're going to detect. So the question is, how do you make a really, really small capacitor and then still figure out how to get an electron to it if it's not coupled to anything else? So uh, we built this device, which is a whole talk in itself. We call a pump gate uh, jot. Um, and again, the objective is to minimize the capacitance on the uh, sense node. Also attached to the sense node, the floating diffusion, uh, here is a source follower for uh, kind of the in-pixel amplifier, uh, and then also a reset gate to reset this. Uh, most of the noise in this system comes from the source follower, the one of ref noise and that source follower, so we're trying to get above that. Uh, it's also true that most of the capacitance comes from the source follower, so you get into this funny thing that you'd like to make the capacitance as small as possible, so you want to reduce the source follower. You reduce the source follower, the one of ref noise goes up, so you just shoot yourself in the foot. So you can't really deal with that too much yet. We haven't, well, we'll tell you, we've switched to looking at JFETs, but uh, the thing we do focus on is getting rid of the other parasitic capacitances uh, in the circuit. Uh, so for that reset gate, there are two ways we looked at. One was a so-called tapered reset gate, and the other is a punch-through uh, reset. Uh, they both work pretty well. So this is, we were just looking at this. This is kind of a model. Uh, if we look at the actual results we're getting now on our uh, chips, uh, we see that we get very clear uh, discrete peaks photoelectron counting. This is with an average uh, exposure, H is one, so one electron on average, and we get zero, one, or two, or three, or four uh, electrons when we read out the same pixel over and over again and just uh, make a histogram of the readout voltages. <clears throat> if we increase the uh, flux by about a factor of two, the Poisson distribution shifts exactly the way it's supposed to, and three and 4.3. Here. So uh, from this photon counting histogram, there's a lot of things you can uh, observe immediately. Uh, first is uh, you know what the uh, conversion gain is in your device because of the peak spacing. It's exactly one electron. You know how much noise there is by the depth of this valley. It's intimately dependent on the read noise, and we're measuring read noise that's in the 1 one-hundredth of an electron RMS range, which sort of seems ridiculous, but as you can see from the bit error rate curve, reducing that read noise at that level is actually quite critical. Uh, and uh, also uh, the peak heights, uh, of course, follow a Poisson distribution, and so we can work backwards to get the exposure also just from uh, these peak height amplitudes. I won't go into this, but uh, not every transistor it works the same, so they all have different values of read noise. Uh, they also have different capacitances due to photolithographic uh, variations and that leads to a scatter of uh, different read noise levels. Uh, in terms of dark current, uh, actually the dark current is very well behaved, an average of about 0.16 electrons per second uh, at uh, room temperature. Uh, and in fact, you make a histogram of uh, 16,000 or so devices, you can actually still see uh, quantization of the electrons in the dark current, one electron, two electrons, et cetera. And the tail is uh, fairly normal. That has a lot to do with the fact that we're storing our electron deep below the surface, away from any silicon-silicon dioxide uh, interfaces. Uh, lag is uh, also well-behaved. Um, so we're like illuminating with one electron on average over a bunch of frames, then we cut off the light, and we see that we're down in the mud. Really, this is not really lag, it's some other stuff. <clears throat> uh, another uh, important uh, thing is that we were talking about before about the log density versus log quanta exposure. Uh, and of course, this is that 1 minus e to the minus h nonlinearity. Um, when you get down into the lower uh, exposures and low light, uh, you want to have an accurate uh, count. And what happens is if you have read noise, let's say, of 0.26 electrons, that's the blue curve, when you get down to low exposures, uh, actually you're dominated in your count by just bit error rate. Basically, you're miscounting uh, certain uh, events that were noise, thermal noise, as uh, photons. So you wind up with this sort of transfer curve. Uh, so when you get down to about 0.15 or 0.17 in this case, uh, 
we get uh, pretty good behavior, and the red dots are, in fact, experimental data. So uh, we're actually getting very low uh, read noise. Uh, so moving on to the readout, uh, this is actually a Sony device, it's not our device, but we use the same architecture at uh, TSMC, and we're not allowed to show a cross-section of that, so I'm showing Sony, but uh, so here's backside eliminated stack device. Here are the micro lenses, uh, here are color filters, uh, then the actual detection area separated by uh, deep trench isolation, and then uh, metalization. And then the wafer bonding connection, um, which is a pretty tight pitch, not quite the pixel pitch, but uh, still a tight pitch. And then the backside uh, kind of ASIC readout circuit, um, which is fabricated on a separate wafer and then bonded to the detector layer. So this is, you know, like in all of your smartphones today. So this is not like exotic technology. Well, it is exotic, but it's in mass production uh, today. And then Sony's already talking about putting a third layer in the stack. So, um, so we utilize the same technology for implementing an RRA. Uh, we went to an architecture which we call a uh, cluster parallel readout, where we actually have a cluster of these uh, tiny photo detectors. And then all the readout circuitry required to digitize and output uh, those, uh, that cluster is located underneath the cluster in the next layer of the chip. Um, so it's a very scalable structure. Once you build one cluster, you can just replicate it. And uh, of course, the pow total power goes up, but the complexity of the circuit design does not go up because you're just repeating the pattern over and over again. So we built a, uh, thanks to the uh, generosity of uh, TSMC, we built a, uh, uh, a one million pixel, or JOTS we call these specialized pixels, uh, that operates at uh, 1,040 frames per second with a one bit digital output. And there's actually 20 different designs on this uh, test chip. So this is actually 20 separate one mega JOT devices. Um, and you know, we tried a lot of things. We have to do the Histograms that I showed you before, we need analog readout. Uh, so the, some are designed with analog and some are single bit digital. Uh, the pitch size is 1.1 microns. Uh, and it's a shared readout structure and we have different types of ways of building the jots uh, all uh, done in this chip. Uh, okay, this is way too much detail for all of you, but uh, it's, uh, anyway, we have this detector substrate layer and then we have the, uh, the readout layer underneath it. And uh, the, it, it works. So uh, we uh, built a uh, very, uh, it's a pretty crude camera, but uh, camera that uh, looks at a target. So we printed uh, this leopard out on uh, paper and then pointed the camera at it and then collected the data and able to build up uh, the image quite nicely um, under uh, fairly low light. Uh, and then uh, there's one extra step. I said uh, we can uh, combine the data that's in a small cubicle in X, Y, and time to create the pixel value. Uh, we do that, but also uh, Stanley Chan at Purdue has another denoising algorithm, which is uh, quite remarkable in its ability to make really shot noise limited images look pretty good. So we've also been working with him to do that. So uh, you can see it's uh, not perfect yet. We've got some fixed pattern noise in this megapixel array, but uh, basically, you know, uh, we're doing, uh, um, right now, a million pixels at 1,000 frames per second. So not something you could do with EMCCD or, um, and spat arrays also, you can't build them to this size or this pixel density. And they're much more expensive. Because we're using just, I guess I should emphasize this, we are using basically a commercial CMOS image sensor process with just a few implantation tweaks to make our devices. So this is something that can be rolled out into mass production pretty quickly, we think. Uh, so uh, also the uh, results here, this is the, uh, I'm happy to come back to these in questions, but in, uh, for that one megapixel uh, jot, including all the I.O. that's involved in getting the data off the chip, which turns out to be most of the power, uh, we are at uh, about 17.6 milliwatts in total for this one megapixel device running at a thousand frames per second. So the idea is we want to scale this megapixel up to a hundred megapixels and a billion pixels. So we're still off by about an order of magnitude in the power, but I think we know how to get there. 
Um, our target is to have a billion pixels right out of 1,000 frames per second, which is a terabit per second, by the way, uh, for less than one watt. <clears throat> Uh, so right now our projection is that we should be able to do at least 100,000 with the current technology at uh, a watt. And I have no idea how much more time I have, but I drank a lot of coffee and I was worried that our plane was late due to a delayed arriving aircraft and uh, I wanted to kind of make sure we got through our time.